You know, for me, uh, filming with guidelines is really about just the opportunity to travel and, and fish with different guys and and uh, it kind of gives me an excuse to travel and, and maybe learn some different things in different areas. One of the cool things about Florida is the diversity. You know, I've had a chance to fish in whether it be lakes, um, rivers, uh, big bays, and certainly tidal creeks. So St. Augustine is really about um, a couple times, I think it's probably 20 times a year, Tommy told me, but it's about the flood tide. You know, and I'm a sight fisherman by nature. It's what I get all jazzed up about anyway. And he told me that we have a really good chance of seeing some flooded grass with that full moon. We've yeah. got almost a six foot tide today. So we're, you know, you're sitting somewhere where it's six foot deep, six hours later, mud. it's dry, you're in the mud. So the fish move a lot. It's a cool place to fish, you know, and I, like I said, I told you last night, I hadn't been here in, you know, six, seven years. It's still unspoiled, you know, when you're out here, you'll see it today. There's, there's so many areas you can be, you can look all the way around and not see any houses. You know, all you're looking at is marsh. It's, uh, it's pretty unique, and especially the flood tide stuff that we'll hopefully get into today. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Here we are running down the river and he's, you know, elbowing me. He's like, hey, we're getting ready to make a sharp turn into the marsh here, so kind of hang on. And I mean, he's hot riding a little bit, which I'm all for. That Maverick is like cutting it, you know, no problem. So we're rolling through and I know what's going on underneath there because I fished there before. There's oysters everywhere. And he's carving through the little cuts and going through some really, really skinny areas. And we get, finally get back there and it's like all you can see is mullet and shrimp getting blasted. And I'm, I look back at him, I'm like, really? This, this is our starting spot? You know, anything that looks kind of fishy through here, everything looks fishy through here. Yeah. But, you know, any little point or anything. And there's a couple little key areas that some fish might be sitting. Well, the water definitely dropping, huh? Yeah. Still dropping out of here? It's, it's still going out right now. You have one of those other rods with a plastic on it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we might see some, yeah, it's some stuff going on go. back in here that would require that a plastic. Yeah, like if you see one cruising the edges? Yeah, or like, you know, up in here, I actually just saw see something getting messed with up there shallow. Oh, up on that That's, bank over there? A little, yeah, it's a little flat. It'll be sitting up in there. So Jay and I have known, sort of known each other for a long time. I mean, most, mostly from the redfish tour days. We both used to do a lot of traveling and, and fish uh, the redfish tour stuff. So we've kind of been acquaintances for a long time. And then in more recent years, we've kind of hung out a little bit at some trade shows. Um, but it was cool to fish with him, man. I, we've been talking about fishing for a long time. So it was really nice to, to have him come up here and, and get to do some of this stuff up here. I'd, I'd like to go fish with him and maybe do some tarpon fishing back where he's at. Oh, oh my goodness. God, how was Jeez. that by, dude? Oh, God. Golly. That's a good one. Ooh. Smoked it. He annihilated that top water. Man, what a bite. Oh. Came out of his skin to eat it. He did. I'm surprised he didn't break the plug in half as hard as he hit it, man. I know. Jeez, he absolutely crunched it. Nice fish. Coming up, Jay. It's like, yeah. It's like walking that dog on a leash right here. I got, <laughs> got him right top of the head. Look at that, yeah. Be oh. just super careful with that. Yeah. Oh, oh got he's one. Not going anywhere. Got one left. You caught him looking. That's what I would call that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. How's that? Yeah, you he, think he was hungry? Oh yeah, he completely missed it when he came over top of it. That's what it was. Wow. Either that or that front hook, I think maybe pulled out. Yeah. I can't believe how clean, like, 
you know, our fish right now are really kind of orange because of the tannic water. Right. And, uh, oof. You know, we've had these, uh, these higher than normal tides, so it kind of cleans our water up, but we usually have orange looking fish too. Oh, but yeah. right now they're just, they're silvered up a little because of that higher than normal water. You know, it's ocean water that really pushes back into yeah. these little areas. Yeah. Cool, dude. Hey, nicely done. Yeah, man. <laughs> I appreciate you grabbing him with uh, all the trouble sticking out of the top of his head. Yeah, that was I, good work. I risk my life all the time, you know, <laughs> in this business. It's dangerous. That was awesome. Getting in the back of those creeks is really cool. It's just something you don't always get to see, you know, with, with the mud banks. And we're fishing in a foot and a half of water at the deep point. And uh, the fish are just staging as they go. But at a certain point, the tide does drop out to the point where it's not moving anymore. And then, as Tommy said, it's time to go. Mid-tide, you know, Tommy had a game plan from, it was very clear he had a game plan from start to finish. And on the way down to the next set of fishing grounds, um, we pulled off to a spot that I was a little, and I'm like, what are we doing here? And then it started to erupt, and I now knew why we were there. We had to leave the jacks because we knew we were going to be wanting to stage up in the mouth of this creek where the flood tide was going to start happening. So the Spartina grass that we have here, really the, the type of grass you need for, for that flood tide to happen, which the flood tide, all that means is that it's getting up above what the normal high tide would be. So that allows the water to get in these areas, these grassy areas where the tide usually doesn't get to. It's so cool, that backdrop, I mean, you can't ask for a better You've got a, a, a pumpkin orange redfish tail sticking up through grass that's fluorescent green with you know a backdrop of, of pines. And I mean, it's just it's an incredible image to see. You know, we're power pulled down and we could see the water just literally flooding past us as it's filling up the grass. And Tommy looks over and he's like, it's time, it's time to go. You're literally hunting. And that's the cool thing about it is it's not only just a sight fishery, but it's you're kind of hunting down that redfish that's maybe making a mistake and showing himself. Oh, stop right there. Oh, yeah, there he is, there he is. You see him? Oh, that's it, that's it. Bring it, bring it, bring it. There he is, nice. That was awesome, man. Dude, what a cast, man. That was killer. Oh, that's a nice fish. I'm gonna hop down. Oh, yeah. Purdy. Sucked it right up, too. Dude, he made a mistake when he came up there and got that crab on that grass. Hey. The slurp gives him away every yes, time. Yes, it does. Man. Hey, all we need is for him to make a mistake every once in a while. Yep. <laughs> Yes! Hell yeah! <laughs> That's what we've been looking for. Man, dude, Gosh. he freaking slurred right on the side of that grass. Did you hear it? I mean, oh yeah, oh I yeah. Mean, well, and I understand why. I mean, how many crabs have we seen on the top of that grass? Yeah, when you get in these areas where you see all those crabs up, you can almost guarantee they're gonna be up yeah. slipping around like that. Yeah. So. That's freaking awesome. Very cool, man. All right. First thing we see is all the crabs on the surface you know they're they're like hanging on the edges of the grass the one of the baits i rigged on this weedless uh hook was you know a bait that really has a really wide tail so i can kind of glide it and it swims through the grass really easily uh and it was important to be able to do that because these bait you know these baits are going to be gliding right through the grass i don't want it to get it hung up and the redfish are in the thick of it and they're in some of the heaviest part of the grass because that's also where the crabs are Look at 
just sitting, he's just plugged in right there, man. Oh gosh, here we go. Here it comes. Nice! <laughs> that is how it's supposed to that look. That is it, man. How cool is that? How cool is that? Good fish, too, man. Oh, man, he's pretty. Good fish, Tom. Oh, dude, that's a nice one. Wow. Oh. Dude. That bait is money for this stuff. Dude, yes! How, how good was that? Dude. Oh, God. This is how all your clients get treated? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course I do. Wow. wow. That was killer, man. I mean, he gave us the show, didn't he? Oh, like, at one point, over half his tail was sticking out of the water. I mean, doing this, that's exactly what you want to see. That's that's it, man. I mean, God, look at how pretty that guy is, too. Look at the colors on him. You can tell he's been up here shallow. You know, thinking back to the trip, you know, to St. Augustine and fishing with Tommy, of which we've talked about, you know, fishing together for a long time, uh, Guidelines gave me an excuse to go up there and fish with him. And, um, you know, I was super pleased to see that fishery and, and through his eyes and what he gets to see on a daily basis. And uh, I could promise you this, I'll be back.